accessible, I guess. Yeah, and it kind of goes back to what Reese was saying. You know, it's it's built by collectors for collectors, and I think that's uh, massively uh, important. You know, to for an NFT platform, you know, it's like these other platforms. They're they're great. They have artists on there, but they also have just you know just too much junk. And and Gary V has even said it himself. You know, it, it's just kind of like a lot of these projects aren't going to be around. And, um, or at least artists and things like that, but it's going to come down to, you know, quote unquote, um, big, you know, I think he even said he was, he was talking about, uh, top shots and, you know, he was saying it's going to come down to the players. And then he mentioned, you know, you know, this player's not, he's not a Batman or he's not a Superman, you know, he, you know, nobody knows this guy, but you know, in, in, in one year that that dunk is not going to be worth you know what it what it was you know this year during the bull market so yeah but they like messed up with the whole marketing of everything and that and how much they did with releases and stuff yeah I, i'm not familiar with, a little bit with them um but i've kind of noticed a little, little things here and there but uh not to directly compare with top shots at all yeah and then the front has their own thing too Hmm. Yeah, and look, I, I think some of those marketplaces will survive. You know, people need places to go and, and trade these assets and things. Um, and look, maybe some NFTs take off on, on other chains at, at some point. But um, yeah, whether the the business that that is attached to them or whatever, you know, like a, or if it just becomes the marketplace, um, it's yet to be seen. We're obviously so early in all of this, but yeah, as I said, I, I, it's just one of our key advantages that we're we're producing content that people already know and love you know we don't have to recreate a new brand and, and things like that like in the nft space brands that have actually kind of like maybe axie infinity um you know they seem to have a pretty good following and, and user base and players on the on the game but I don't know, can you guys name other other nft projects that are establishing their own brand as a product michael Keane's probably the man there to tell you on that he's the nft guru <laughs> you're asking could other uh i wasn't thinking about that I, I was actually trying to plan my own question while you were saying that so to be honest with you i didn't hear exactly what you said if you want to ask the question again i could probably have an answer for you yeah yeah just just uh talking about nft projects or nft based projects at the moment that have successfully established themselves as a brand so i gave uh axie infinity as an example right most people i think in the space know about axes it's got a bit of hype it's still only within crypto to my knowledge um gods unchained might be another example uh as a game that that stands to penetrate a bit further you know as its own entity um but but yeah these yeah. marketplaces yeah yeah go for it oh well there's definitely i mean there's definitely a few you mentioned that like uh, i mean our planet's a very popular one where you know the stuff's really expensive people are making a lot of money uh, v friends, somebody mentioned Gary V. I mean, I was looking back at, you know, where they're at, they're getting close to being sold out. The floor is really high. Like that's a very successful, that thing's going to turn into like, he's going to do all kinds of like toys and clothing and probably, yeah. probably. But see that that's leveraging, that's leveraging his brand, right? He, he is already okay. established. Fair enough. With Fair enough. Sure. Yeah. Whereas, Fair enough. yeah. Yeah, I think the bridge for new NFT companies to to go out and establish themselves as a brand is is quite a difficult thing to to achieve. Now, I mean that's the same in any industry, right? If you're a new clothing label or or anything, to to actually get that market penetration is is uh, quite a feat, you know. And, and obviously, there's yeah. a lot of brands. That oh yeah, in. no, you guys have done. Yeah, I'm not trying to mm. do anything. You guys have done, no doubt. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I guess that's, that's the point I'm making. You know, we we are able to leverage these existing fan bases and brands to establish ourselves as opposed to starting from a blank slate and trying to build that audience uh, and, and educate them on, on how. I got you. I understand the question a little more now. I understand the question for sure. Yeah. Um, yep. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask two questions if you don't mind. First, thanks so much for taking all this time with us. This is really it's a real pleasure. No um, So uh, circling back to moving to Immutable, do you think that is possibly going to expedite uh, us getting streaming data, like sales data from the marketplace, maybe onto a website like Mark's VV Wiki, um, something like that? Uh, 
And my yeah. second question is, do uh, you or even the company like Vivi or Akomi own any of the digital real estate? Do you guys like consider buying Sandbox that dropped tomorrow morning? Is that something? Are you guys in on that? You know, was, uh, I just want to see if there's any if any kind of thought process there or anything like that with the company. Uh, so those are my two questions. I know they're way yeah. different. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I think Dan mentioned this in, in the clubhouse last week. Um, but absolutely, you know, once this, obviously then we were trying to not mention what chain we were moving to and, and all those kind of things. Um, but once the migration happens, yeah, all of that data uh, becomes a lot more transparent and easier to track so that we can set up these, you know, the APIs or the proper wiki sites and, and track those values. So, yeah, I, I do think that expedites that process. I don't know how long the migration will take. I imagine probably the next couple of months um, before we, we fully transition. Um, but but that is definitely on the cards. I personally, um, I haven't bought any land yet. Uh, I was around in the early days of Decentraland and considered it then, but it, it wasn't really a proven um, value proposition for me at that point. Obviously now, you know, you've got Binance and Kraken and, and, and all these big, like RFOX, all those kind of big things building in Decentraland. Um, because I think everybody sees the potentiality of the metaverse. So yeah, look, I think that there's there's opportunity there. Um, Sandbox, same deal. I, I, I followed their journey a bit at the start. I, I have to admit, I haven't really tuned in that much lately. Um, but I'm I'm more likely to buy land in the VV verse than anywhere else. Um, uh, not just because obviously this is where my attention and, and support is, but um, for the same reason that that. I, I'm investing time and energy into the app and, and the whole ecosystem. You know, I, I really do think that we are going to continue to to carve out our own, own space. Um, and if we're, we're bringing in, you know, millions of users and, and an established fan base and then walking them through that part of the ecosystem, well, you know, I think as far as digital land goes, that's where it, it stands to have some pretty incredible value. Plus, like, I get to build my own little fun land or something at some point. Like, why not, you know? So you guys are going to be selling digital land? Is that uh, something you want uh, to I won't confirm it just in case. But, but, uh, uh, okay, okay. But yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely. I think we spoke about it last week anyway. You know, that's that's definitely where the. Um, you may have. You may have. Yeah, yeah. That that kind of that, that's the idea behind the the VV verse. You know, the the first stages of it might not be that, but yeah, absolutely. You know, as as the idea of the metaverse continues and we build our own you know metaverse style world um that comes with it too and and that goes back to the point earlier about uh, the omi tokens and the modeling right so same thing if you want to buy land you you would be using or burning omi tokens to do that you know if you want to participate in things in the the vviverse that costs gems well then there's more omi being used in the background um things like that too so yeah as as the ecosystem develops we continue to build in more utility for the token and it will be for things like that too so Regarding the purchasing of land, is that all going to be in virtual reality or is that going to be like layered over the actual world? Like I'm in Chicago, so will I have like land in Chicago? Yeah, uh, a few things have been discussed. So one where it's just a completely separate digital world, um, sort of like your sandbox and things. But you no, know, there's definitely discussions of being able to overlay the VVverse or at least some parts of it into augmented reality. Um, or into the real world as well. I don't actually know how that how that will look or, or how it will develop. Um, but you know, it, it would be pretty awesome if you're looking at your house, but your house actually looks like you know your your spot in the VVverse or or something like that. You know, and, and you can augment things that way. I think that'd be a pretty cool, uh, a really cool bridge between physical and digital as well. So who knows where that technology goes in a few years? Um, I have a quick question from the audience. Um, could you please explain the process of the Rabbit Grim um, purchase with the physical collectible and everything? Like, how will that be shipped and that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I, I will actually. I probably should have been doing it now, but I will write an article about this <laughs> when uh, when I get the time and the details. I think the the drop itself will take place as they ordinarily do. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be a, a timed release and we all just go gung-ho and hope that we get one. Um, but then obviously we have all, we have your contact details. We have your email address, the things that are linked to your account. 
um, things like that. So there's ways for us to to reach out to you, I would imagine, to then organise shipping of the, the physical sculpture. I don't know whether it comes from the place where it was manufactured or anything like that or, or how that sort of works. So, I, yeah, I'll, I'll have to get some more details on that um, closer to the release of it. But, yeah, I'll, I'll add it to my article if, if I get it in the next 24, 48 hours. And will those be um, 100 editions available with 40 reserved? Or will it be like 60 available with 40 reserved? No, I think it's, I think the whole, the whole release will be available to my knowledge. Um, Cause it's not like, you know, the, the license, so there's no license or holding onto them. This is a, an artist release on the platform. Um, I'll confirm those details anyway. And I, it might even be like a gold version and a silver version. I'm not a hundred percent on that. So don't quote me, but um, I will find out closer. Yeah, to I'm that. I'm super excited about that, even though I may not get one, but I'm super excited about the kind of, you know, the, the cross between physical and digital. Uh, I love that. Um, yeah. Also, I have a uh, question from the audience. Um, they're asking, uh, will we see Nifty Gateway style auctions in the future for super low mints? How do, um, how do they run their auctions? Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure either. Okay, I don't know that. They, 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 just have a... they do it a bunch of different ways. Um, some of them are actually drawings where it'll say uh, there's a hundred of them and they cost, you know, whatever the number is $200, $500. Sometimes it's $5 and everybody puts in and you don't have to pay it unless you win, but they do the drawing. And if you win, you know, they take the money and you get the collectible. They also have silent auctions. They have a bunch of different ways. They have open editions where it might last for five minutes and however many people buy it, buy it. Right. Um, but right, the right. draw the drawing yeah. right, the drawing is probably what the, the question that the audience was asking about. And that's a pretty fun yeah. video. That's pretty cool. They they also have yeah. open editions where um, a particular you know model will actually be printed an unlimited amount of times, but only within a certain time period. So it could be five minutes, could be fifteen minutes, could be twenty-four hours, uh, and then once it's once that time is run out, then then they won't make that one anymore. They also do like you know just standard auctions. Uh, let's say there's a five of five piece, and you know um, that the top five bidders will all you know walk away with that piece, and and nobody else will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll have to find out to be honest with you. Um, to my knowledge, at the moment, we'll we'll continue to do drops as they are, but. Same as same as everything in the ecosystem. If it if it becomes a better way to do things, or if we can change things up, or or, or a necessity more than anything, then then absolutely we'll look at other options. And uh, just on that, um, Ron English actually had a, an NFT drop back in March on Nifty Gateway, and the stats are amazing. The the one of one sold for twenty six thousand. Um, wow. The hundred dollar NFT had fifteen thousand entries into it. So that just sure. shows the popularity of Ron English. Oh yeah, and Ron English, like you know, I'll, I'll I'll go into more depth on this when I write about it. But he is huge, you know. He is like like the godfather of street art in the US, and and you know, his his obviously his pop culture line is coming to VV first. But just having Ron uh, on the platform as well validates us as as a platform and a yeah, place exactly. for this physical sure. digital bridge to happen. And and obviously he is very connected in the space. But Ron and Dave, you have actually been friends for decades. Um, David, you being an avid collector of his work, which I'm assuming is how they kind of came together. But yeah, we, people like that are helping us to shape the offerings that we make as well um, and, and, and bridge that kind of, it, it helps us to expand our knowledge uh, into other regions, right? Like David, you, he collects everything. So, so he kind of has that, but it's really great for us to have people like Ron on board. Um, that can help us to shape these experiences for users as well and, and go about them the best way. So I'm excited to see what else he eventually launches on the platform too and, and that kind of thing. So There's been a couple of um, uh, guys putting a bit of time into uh, following, uh, looking to see who David has followed on Instagram and who he's friends with. And, you know, there's a few few major artists that there's been photos with and he follows and has interactions with. So there's a bit of speculation <laughs> who's coming in terms of yeah. goals. Maybe even Beeble. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Cause is um, Cause is the artist whose name is Brian. Is it Brian something? Someone might correct me on that. Uh, he was actually found and incubated by Lev, uh, the owner of Toy Tokyo. 
Um, so I don't know if you've seen that, that uh, Roy Tokyo article there, but Lev being in the designer toy world and, and art world and things like that. So like, you know, when, when, when you really dig through the pieces and realize that they're the kind of people that we have uh, helping us and working with us, you know, Lev from Toy Tokyo, obviously all of their industry connections, um, artists like Ron, stuff like that. Like it's, I, I think every week people can see how far and wide this vision truly goes. Um, and, and what it stands to encompass. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting pieces that'll that'll come together over the next few years as as more consumers become used to the digital side of collecting and, and digital art as well. For sure. We'll say to that. For sure. Of, um, I think it's on David News Instagram, but there's a video, a bit of a walkthrough of one of his, like his actual showroom. Um, has that, has anybody seen that? Yeah, yeah. Put a post it. Yeah, a while back, it's amazing. It's collection. Yeah, yeah right. it's like an episode off of like MTV Cribs or something. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. And look, I'm not. Hey, yeah, go. Even the um the dinosaur uh, teaser we gave, you could see like um Louis Volt and yeah um, poster on the background. So people are speculating that that's coming. And <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I think if you go through that, there's you can see some Ron English work in the background of of, ah. of that video. If I, I think it's that one. Um, Very cool. Yeah, not to throw out some speculation, but you you know David is a big fan of quite a lot of things, and and I have no doubt that as a fan, he's going to try and get the things he loves on the platform. So I would uh, I would love to see that as well. I saw a few things that I really love um, that I'm a fan of as well. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to name drop to to avoid speculation, but I would love to see some of what uh, David collects in the app as well. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's his passion business, right? And and there are things that he's passionate about, and and obviously knows a lot about. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So we'll just have to see what comes. I'm interested, Reese, to see you know with the physical um, virtual combo in terms of the resale price for for. For the NFTs, because um, and we're seeing it with these other ones where they've done combos, is when you want to resell your, say, your ultra rare gold um, bunny, um, are you reselling just the NFT? Will people say, "Hey, I'll, I'll post you out the model as well"? Um, obviously, that that there's a risk in that. So, not just for Vivi, I'm just thinking in general with all these NFTs that give physical items with them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm curious to see what happens there too. I guess once you're the owner of it. It's up to you, right? If you want to sell that sculpture separately, if you want to sell the digital version separately, um, I, I think we'll probably see two separate economies pop up from this one. Um, but also, you know, I, I think people try and get these things. Obviously, there's going to be speculators, but if I get my hands on one of those sculptures, like I'm not going to let that thing go. No way. <laughs> Heck no, no, man. Heck no. no. Yeah, that's 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 an item, you know, and, and yeah, that's. I, I think that most people will have that that point of view you might you might eventually sell the digital one but that's a the digital version other than being its own amazing ar collectible like we've already got with with batman and things is a little bragging rights piece as well right like i got that physical one you know or presumably anyway um so yeah i, I don't know if i would let go of either of them i'm sure they'll they'll both fetch a price but same thing right now we're going to see as we just mentioned, like to the the process to sell a physical collectible is much more involved than selling the digital one. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it changes hands, how quickly it changes hands, what the demand is for it, um, all of that kind of thing too. Yeah, I think you guys will have to make sure you you know put a nice obvious disclaimer of that you know there's no responsibility for VV if if the physical doesn't get sent and stuff like that because you will have people scamming and you know all the rest. Of that. Oh, okay. Undoubtedly, people always try to get free stuff out here. <laughs> it's, it's just the nature of the beast. But um, yeah, I think that any any physical sales will be off app anyway, so they're not part of our responsibility. Yeah, you know, we, we manage the digital side. But um, yeah, it might take uh, one or two more guys, and and then you know I wouldn't mind getting some breakfast into me. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for hopping on and and sharing so much uh, your knowledge with us, and we appreciate you for for being here. So, so I did a crash yes, we appreciate you so much. The mutable <laughs> last night, and I was wondering. I noticed that they allow people to mint on their uh, platform. So, will all mm -hmm. the VV drops be minted on the VV app, or will you guys be minting on the mutable X in the future? 
So uh, yeah, the, the NFTs themselves are minted on, on Immutable. Um, that, that's how they're created. They'll have their, their own minting contracts or whatever, but they, they'll be available in the VV app, right? Or there's some sort of backend integration there through our tech stack to mint them, to mint them on the chain, same, same as it is at the moment. Um, so yeah, but Immutable, it's important to remember where, you know, if you think of Immutable like the iPhone and we're an app on Immutable, right? So other platforms and other tech stacks can build on top of it too. Uh, if there's a, you know, say like a nifty style marketplace that springs up on Immutable specifically, you'll be able to mint your own things as a, as a content creator or, or whatever. So Immutable provides the chain, you know, and, and all that, that sort of base layer infrastructure and, and then the companies like us build on top of it. Um, so yeah, does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Thanks. Is it a pure coincidence, Reese, that Immutable is headquartered in Sydney, right where you are? It's quite handy. It's quite handy. That um, a bit of backstory there. Uh, Alex Saunders, if you guys, I don't know if you follow yeah. him, excuse it all. Um, probably the best voice in crypto, to be honest. Uh, doesn't put out as much uh, content these days because he has a members platform, but I got talking to him um, when we did an interview. We actually did, I think our very first Ecomi interview was with Alex for the Secure Wallet three or four years ago. Yeah. Um, and since then, I have been in his community. I've just kind of joined being Australian. Um, he puts out a lot of content that's, uh, you know, Australian specific, our, our housing market and economy and, and sort of those updates and, and all of that. But I've always just found him to be a very good unbiased voice when it comes to the industry. Um, so when I hit him up, you know, a few months ago and said, hey, like we, we're kind of finally getting Vivi off the ground. Like, do you want to do another interview? Uh, we got chatting and, and chatting about the future of it and and all that. And I had already heard an interview with him and Immutable uh, and another one with Immutable and the Bankless guys. I don't know if you guys listen to the Bankless podcast. Um, so I kind of had a, a good understanding there. I did know that they were Australian or Robbie, the, the founder and CEO is. And Alex put us together. He, he kind of gave us the connect there to have a discussion. Um, and at the time, you know, we had already reviewed quite a number of other chains and, and other platforms that, that might have been suitable for VV. Um, but as soon as we kind of had the discussion with Immutable, it, it just was the right fit, you know, as a technology partner and, and as a team, you know, for, for people that we want to work with, because obviously you have to work quite close with the with the teams that, that actually maintain the, the chain um, to get these things done. Um, they just provided everything we needed and ticked all the boxes. So. Yeah, it was, it's a bit of a no-brainer at that point. Sparky or uh, Pineapple Gang, you got a uh, question? We got a couple of new, uh, maybe last-minute question for Reese or anybody? Yeah, somebody asked me a question. and um, They asked me, will the first 40 editions of the Ron English drop be withheld because there's only 100 editions? Yeah, we just asked that. Yeah, um, okay. Again. No, no, I don't. My think so. connection broke <laughs> off. I no, apologize. No, that's fine. Uh, no worries. Yeah, I'll, I'll reconfirm. But no, the, those the first forty editions of Hell will normal drops uh, for the license source, right? For all the number ones, like, will go into a big VV showroom. Um, the other ones are held for license source. Some will be used for for promotions and things down the line. Um, but it's a bit too early to to throw them into circulation just yet. Uh, but no, I think on a release like this, because it is like an artist release on the platform as opposed to a release that we're, we're using uh, a license source IP to create um, that all the available editions will be, will be released. Uh, yeah. That, that's my assumption. I'll confirm it, but I think it's probably pretty safe to say that there's no, there's no one or no need to keep 40 of the, of the sculptures for. So. Thanks for repeating. Uh, we got one more there guys. I have a quick question. Hello. Shout out to the Pineapple Gang, shout out to the Ecomi fam and the Ecomi team. I appreciate y'all. Yes, man. Um, but what is the criteria for someone to submit um, different NFTs to the VV platform? And how long will people be able to um, upload their own artwork? Yeah, so uh, we covered this a bit earlier too, but I'll, I'll go through it again. Uh, it's not an option. Thanks. It's, it's not an option at the moment. We don't accept user-generated content. Uh, everything on, on VV 
right now and for the foreseeable future is very uh, deliberately curated uh, and from premium and established brands and licensors. Uh, eventually, with the Artist Alley, there will be some opportunity uh, for incredible artists to to release some works. You know, if you're if you're an incredible 3D artist or, or something like that, or there's some some crossover because you know there's some really incredible stuff out there, and we understand that not everybody comes with an established audience. Um, but that's that's quite a ways into the future. Um, we have a lot of, of branded and, and premium content to get through before we get to that point. So yeah, VV isn't designed to be a submit your own NFT type platform. Definitely. Thank you for answering. No problem. Well, we appreciate you having uh, being on here, and we don't want to. I don't want to keep you too long, and uh, just want to say thank you so much again, and thank you all the people that joined as well um so yeah yeah thank you guys so much a big shout out to everyone i'm sure we're all in different time zones and, and up at different times of the day so thanks for tuning in and staying involved i didn't expect to, that we'd be chatting for this long but i love this part of the community. yeah do you, uh so we can kind of maybe expect you to make more appearances here and there yeah yeah after last week um you know the intention is to be able to do this every week uh, time permitting. I was going to open it up this afternoon anyway, but this I think has probably we covered that. Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the intention. Now that I've got a lot more hours back in my day, uh, it will be easier to, to get back into the community and, and run these things. And obviously, we've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> there's, there's new announcers and announcements and brands and licenses and all the other things coming too. So um, yeah, I, I think moving forward, the It'll be nice to, to have a few different when questions, you know. Thanks, Reese, and good <laughs> luck, everyone. The drop is in at exactly twelve hours from now. So, yeah, my right, friends. Uh, what's what's everyone going after? Have you got a uh, got a strategy? Got something you're interested in? Supergirl. <laughs> <laughs>